Want to give a shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the continued support. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading Forge of the High Mage. This is the fourth book in the Path to Ascendancy series, which is the millionth book in the Greater Malazan series. Uh, this one's by Ian C. Esselmont. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. So this one's really good. Um, you know, I, I'm not like as glowing about this one as I was than the books number two and three, but this is really good. I'm gonna give this a four out of five stars. Um, and I had a really good time reading this. Um, I had a really good time reading the content of this book, but I did not really enjoy reading the fact that I actually had to read a physical book here. <laughs> I have not read a physical book in a really long time. Uh, I'm all Kindle all the time or audiobook, and yeah, it sucks. I forgot how much I hate reading physical books. Um, I had to do it because for whatever reason, these books are published uh, differently in the UK as they are in America. They come out in the UK um, as I think Malazan books in general do, even the Ericsson ones. Uh, they come out six months earlier in the UK, and I don't have the patience for that. Um, so I, the publisher very kindly um, sent me this copy. Thank you so much. Uh, who is the publisher here? Bantam. Uh, very much appreciate that. That's awesome. I wouldn't have been able to read this had it not been for you. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the book itself. So Forge of the High Mage is part of Path to Ascendancy. Path to Ascendancy is a sub-series within Malazan uh, written by the lesser known of the two Malazan authors, Ian C. Esselmont. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen, which most people are aware of um, if they think of Malazan, uh, is written by Steven Erickson. Um, Esselmont writes kind of almost companion books to that. He writes um, a couple different series, uh, one of which is already done, and that was Novels of the Malazan Empire, I think is the name of it. And it took place kind of at the same time as, in general, the same time as Book of the Fallen, just kind of in different locations dealing with some different people, or some of the people, but after the story kind of left them behind, which Malazan's kind of famous for. Uh, this one is almost like a prequel story of not the world at large, because the world is too big to do a prequel story of. This is a prequel story of the Malazan Empire itself, how it came to be, how Kellen Venn and Dancer came to be in power, and the steps that they took once they got that power. Because when Malazan Book of the Fallen begins, this is not a spoiler, but they control much more than one continent. Um, they have all of um, two continents, uh, they have a large part of another one, and they have a decent chunk of, of another one. How did they get these things? Well, that's what these books investigate. Um, at first, it's the relationship between these, and then they're starting to take power. Now, by this book, they fully have power, and, in, and I didn't know where this book was going to go, um, because it could go in a lot of different directions. And uh, just like every single Malazan book, um, it went in a direction that I did not expect. Um, in this one, it is um, how did they come to control the northern, the continent just north of, of where the Malazan Empire is, is hosted. Um, Kwan Tali is where, where it mainly is. But to the north of that is Falar. Now, I'm, I'm probably messing up these titles. I'm not great at titles because I read these books. I don't listen to them. Um, but... Yeah, I had no idea. Never really thought about it. Falar is not really mentioned too much in the series, but I very much study these maps. So it's, it's always intrigued me about what happens here. And the story was very good that went along with it. Um, you know, it's, it's got the char same characters that I know and love. Um, and Ian C. Esselmont has put his own kind of twist on some of these, but they've been around for so long now that I'm coming to really appreciate the way that he writes them. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that if I read these books at the same time that I was reading the Erickson books, there would probably be some glaring differences between the way that they wrote these same characters. I think that's only natural. They're not the same person. I mean, it might upset me more than it does now having read these afterwards. I mean, one of the reasons that I would recommend people, uh, uh, to not read them at the same time, read them separate. I, at least that helped my um, appreciation for this. Um, and I gave a decent amount of time between when I, when I finished one and, and I started the other. So I think that might have also helped. You know, I, I didn't find the plot on this one to be as engaging as the previous couple. I think some of the things that made me really love the last two books was the slow introduction of characters that I came to know and love later on, finding out their backstories. We didn't get any of that. We didn't really get introduced to any old characters here. Everybody we already know. So it kind of took away that aspect of it, and it made me rely 
all on plot here. And as is frequently common in the Esselmont books, unlike the, the Erickson books, there are usually one or two different storylines that I'm not in love with. Um, in the Erickson books, usually I love all of the storylines. Um, and what I mean by that is in Malazan, you have many, many different storylines going on at the same time. They oftentimes converge towards the end of the book, um, but you'll spend a decent amount of time in basically every chapter bouncing between these different POVs. Um, and there were a couple that I just didn't love here. I don't really want to explain what they are, um, but but yeah, uh, they, they weren't my favorite. Now, I did really like some of them. Um, I particularly liked everything involving the Kachain Chamal, um, which are these dinosaurs with swords for arms. These are not new to Malazan. I, we've met them. We've come to love and hate them. Uh, but they very much feature prominently in this book. And I just love this concept of these characters. The fact that when, when I tell you dinosaurs with sword for arms, you're thinking... That sounds kind of corny, but awesome. But they're much more than that. These are very smart creatures that have like advanced technology. And it's very cool the way that these two very divergent um, concepts can blend together to, to this one book. Uh, you know, I, I, fi I found that the, um, the, the writing quality of this is very true to Ian C. Esselmont. I really like the way that he writes his stories. They're different than Erickson. Of course they are. They're a little bit more direct. Uh, Erickson can write very, you know, flowy, and you're not really understanding everything that's going on often, um, and you just kind of have to put a lot of trust in the author, trust that I found paid off. Um, but it can kind of meander uh, in a good way. Uh, Eric... Uh, uh, Esselmont does not do that. Esselmont writes much more to the point. Um, and I think one way that you can look at that is at the beginning of these books, there's this uh, dramatis personae that explains all the characters. And in this one, it, it looks like this. Um, this is one of the pages. And then there's another one on this back page. Now, in an Erickson book, that would have been like six pages long. It's much, much more complicated and hard to follow to the point where I kind of rely oftentimes when I've read the Erickson books on like having a like supplementing guides that help me along to understand things. You don't need that here. Uh, you'll get it. You don't need to take notes. You're fine. Go enjoy. Um, but yeah. It's really good. I, I I beg people that have slept on Esselmont to stop doing that. I mean, the guy didn't help himself when the first book that he wrote, um, at least the first book I'm aware of, um, is Night of Knives, which I think is the weakest book that he's written. Um, I know some people say it's one of the stronger ones, but I think um, a lot of people say that it's the weakest book. So these people go in thinking like like I did. How could anybody write as good as Erickson? Or even if you don't put Erickson on the pedestal that I do, you, you might say, look, I love Erickson. Clearly somebody doing this is not going to do it as well. I'm going to pass on it. But then eventually people hear about it and they go, let me give it a shot. Then they give Night and Knives a try and it's not great for a lot of people. And they go, okay, I tried it. I'm out. Uh, not good. <laughs> Keep going. The books get better. Uh, some of the books are truly fantastic, um, even in that first series. And then this one is even better than the first series, in my opinion. Um, and, and I think it's not as much as somewhat really getting better as a writer. Um, you know, I, I found that after that first book, Night of Knives, which I felt like the writing quality for me, what I'm into wasn't there. Um, but ever since that book, this has just been consistently the same kind of quality. And in general, it's very consistent. I give basically all of his books fours and fives with a couple exceptions. Um, of Blood and Bone was a big exception um, and Night of Knives. But other than that, these are fours and fives. Uh, and, and that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, stop sleeping on Esamont. He's awesome. These books are really good. Try them out. Uh, you can't get this in America yet. Uh, you'll, if you want to get your hands on this book, um, check out Blackwell's uh, is where I get my books from the UK. Uh, I've got a promo link down below that you can use to click on. It's free shipping internationally, I think. Um, and if you use the link, then I get a little bit of a kickback. Um, but you don't have to. Just go to the site if you want to. But helps me out when you go to it. But that's how I get my books um, whenever I order overseas, when I have to, uh, pretty much exclusively from Malazan. I had to do this with The God Is Not Willing um, and yeah, having to do it here, and I'll probably have to do it in the future. Um, I actually ordered this book and got it, and then I, as I got the publisher had sent me the book, 
before I had gotten the other one. So I thought it was like the, I thought I got the wrong one, like, and then I got two and I was like, what happened? Um, and then I did like a giveaway for the extra one that I had. Um, so, but this is technically the one sent by the publisher. That's why I'm taking the publisher. So, um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you so much for watching this review and as always happy reading to you. I want to give another shout out to all my patrons with a special shout out to my ascendant tier patrons, Anna, Ben, Brian, CJ, Danu, Darren, Evan, Jamie, Maria, Michael Sugarman, My Book is Lit, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Romeo Mike, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sky, and Zion.